In this video, we'll create a function to detect rectangle collisions and use it to allow the player to eat food and be killed by enemies. We'll also align the food to a 10 pixel grid and use object inheritance for more efficient code reuse. So right now when a character moves, you can see that it is moving 10 pixels and each of the blocks, both the food and the player are both 10 pixels, but the player isn't landing exactly on top of one of the pieces of food. If I go over to this one, you can see it's landing in a slightly different place because we've just randomly placed the food all over the place. So in order to fix that, what we want to do is we want to make it in uh, integer multiples of 10. So an easy way to do that is just take the random position, divide it by the integer 10, and then multiply it by the integer 10. This will put it on a 10 pixel grid. It will like snap to grid. So the way this works is if I had 123 and I divide it by 10, it's 12.3, but when you divide an integer by an integer, it truncates the integer, so it just cuts off the decimal point. You're left with 12, and then when you multiply it by 10, well, it gives you some integer multiple of 10. 12 times 10 is 120. Again, 117 divided by 10 is 11.7. We truncate at the decimal and multiply it by 10, you get 110. So it's always in increments of 10. So now when we run it, you can see that we land exactly on top of the food. And over here, exactly on top of the food. Because now we're moving exactly 10 pixels, the food is 10 pixels, and it's on a 10 pixel grid. For collision checking between two rectangles, we have to consider two cases. One case is where at least one of the points of either rectangle is inside the other rectangle, like this. The opposite case looks like this. The other case we have to consider is where no point is inside the other rectangle and yet there's still an intersection because the edges of the rectangle intersect. Recall that in our rectangle function we know the top left corner, the width, and the height. It'll be helpful to know the other three corners as well so we'll write some convenience functions for this. The left edge is x, the right edge is x plus width, the top is y, and the bottom of the rectangle is y plus height. So what we'd like to have is a function that returns the top left corner. It'll return it as a point, but it is possible for width and height to be negative. So to be a little safer, we'll take the minimum of the left edge and the right edge, and the minimum of the top edge and the bottom edge. And we'll use the keyword inline to tell C++ wherever possible, replace the code directly with this statement. That removes a function call, which makes the program run actually a little faster. Now we'll do the same for the other three corners. To check if a point is inside of a rectangle, we need to check and see if the X position is between the left edge and the right edge, and if the Y position is between the top and the bottom. To do this, we'll add another convenience function that'll check and see if a point is in a rectangle. So we'll check if the point's x position is between the top left's x, and if the x is less than or equal to the bottom right's x, which is the right edge. And we'll do the same for the y to see if the y position of the point is between the top and the bottom of the rectangle. Now we'll add another convenience function that'll let us begin to check if one rectangle intersects another. So we'll do our first check to check to see if any of the points of rectangle one are found inside of rectangle two. So we check first the top left, then the bottom right, then the top right, and then the bottom left. Now we need to add our other check to see this case, where the two rectangles are overlapped, but no points are inside of each other. To do this, we'll add another convenience function that just checks to see if an integer is between two other integers. And then we can use that to shorten this function check. We'll check to see if any of the points of the rectangle are between the top and the bottom, and that the x values are to the left and to the right of the rectangle. And we'll do the opposite check to see if any of the points of the rectangle are between the left and right edges of the other rectangle and the points are above and below the blue rectangle. So we'll start by checking to see if the left edge of R1 is between the left and right edges of R2, or if the 
right edge of R1 is between the left and right edges of R2. Then if either of those conditions is true, then we'll check to see if the top of R1 is above the top of R2 and the bottom of R1 is below the bottom of R2. Then we'll do the same check again in the other direction. And if neither of these are true, then we'll return false because there is no rectangle intersection. There's a couple of mistakes here we need to fix in this logic. You can see the matching parenthesis here goes between in range, the first in range, or the second in range and the, and the last set of tests. What we actually wanna do is check either of the two in ranges, and then if either of those is true, then check the next set of tests. So we'll do the same here. Now we'll check for intersections between our player and the food by adding an update function call that we're about to write. Then every time we press a key press, it'll call this update function. In this update function, which will be part of game, we're gonna loop through all the food and check for intersections between the player and the food. Now we still have to create this bounds function that doesn't exist yet, so let's do that. Now, if there's an overlap between the player and the food, we'll change the color of the food to red. Oh, there's a bunch of errors. Let's go to the first one. Always a good idea to start with the first one. Let's see what's going on. Uh, line 48, W is not declared in this scope. Uh, I probably meant width. Uh-huh, rect has width, not W, so let's change all those. It says error passing const my game rect as this argument discards qualifier. What that means is I have a const function and I'm trying to use a non-const function call inside of it. So what we need to do is make the call to top left be a const function as well. In fact, all of these should be const. They don't change any of the variables of the struct. So this is because I forgot to add it to the class definition. Missing some syntax there on line 320. Okay, at built, we have some narrowing conversions. That's okay for now. So we should see that the food changes color when we touch it. And it does, it changes red. All right, let's take a look at these warnings. So they're all the same thing. It's a narrowing conversion of a long int to an int. Uh, okay, point, see point is an int and rect is using a long. We don't really need a long, so let's just make these into ints there. Warning's fixed. So what we really wanna do is have our food disappear when we run into it. So what we need to do is loop through that vector of food, find the one that matches, and then remove it from the list. Let's just use the built-in function that's in C++, std find if. So we'll loop through food starting at the beginning through the end. We're gonna look for where there's an intersection. So we'll have return, return rectangle intersect. So what this does, is uh, we're gonna start from the first item in the food list and we're gonna go through the end. Uh, this is a lambda function. This is a lambda capture inside these brackets. So the ampersand means capture all of the variables available to the function where this lambda is. We're doing that so that we can get player inside of the function because otherwise without this, it wouldn't know what player underscore is. So that lets us do that. And then we pass it a, a food the find if function is going to call our lambda function. It's going to give it one of the food items in the list. And then we're going to check to see if something is true about that item and then return true or false. So this rectangle intersect returns a Boolean and it checks already if the player and the food intersect. So that's what we want. Now find if returns an iterator and to see if it found one, we check to see if it equals the end. So if it's not equal to the end, that means it actually found an intersection. So for now, what we'll do is we will just print a message. Ah, find if is not a member of std. So when this happens, that means you've forgotten to include a header file. std find if is in algorithm. And we have ah, extra parentheses, 
Another const issue. These need to be const. The header file for cout needs to be included. So now we should see a message if we intersect with the food. There it is, food eaten. So now instead of printing a message, we'll just go ahead and remove it. And it's gone. Now when the player eats all the food, the game is over. So what we'll do is in the update function, we'll detect if the list of food is empty. And if it is, we'll set the flag that indicates the game is running to false. Okay, and the game ended. At this point, the game is a little too easy since it's all food and there's no challenges or obstacles. To make things more interesting, let's add some enemies or some ghosts. Now I could just copy player and make another struct called ghost, but it would end up having a color and a position and a size and need bounds just like player and food do. In fact, player and food are basically duplicates of each other too. It would be nice if there were a way for us to create a fundamental object that would allow player and food and ghost to use the same code. And in fact, there is. So to do this, let's create a struct character and we'll pull the guts out of player and put it in character and make player public of character. That means player gets everything that's inside of character and it can add whatever additional functions or member variables that it wants. We'll do the same with food. Now we want the color, position, and size for player to be different from food. So let's add a constructor that allows us to specify the color, position, and size we want to use when we create a new player or food object. So what this does is we can give a new color, a position, and a size. And this colon is for a member initializer list in the class, which sets the member variable color, this one here, to the value passed in when the constructor was called, right here, new color. And we'll do the same with position, setting it to new position and size to new size. Now we'll create the default constructor for player and we can call the characters constructor like this by putting a colon and then character. And we'll do the same for food. Now we'll create a ghost struct. We'll add the ghost vector to our game class. We'll have a create ghosts function. And when we update, we'll check to see if we collide with any ghosts. And if we do, end the game. Okay, and we're back and you can see there's ghosts. So maybe that color's not so great, but when you hit a ghost, you do lose. All right, there's a more visible ghost color. If we eat the food, it disappears. If we hit the ghost, then we lose. <laughs>